Hi, my name's Samuel, and I'm an associate consultant with Red Hat Consulting. Hi, I'm Joe, and I'm an architect with Red Hat Consulting. Today we're going to talk about continuous integration, continuous deployment for your Ansible playbooks and roles. Joe, so I work for an organization in which we're utilizing Ansible playbooks to help stand up our infrastructure. Currently, we have a couple of different environments. We have a dev environment, we have a prod environment. And we're running into this issue in which our Ansible playbooks will work in one environment, but they won't work in another. Uh, another issue we're having is they're not working in one environment that they were just a couple of days ago. Uh, do you have any sort of solution that could help maybe address these sort of issues that we're running into? Yeah, so that's a really common problem. Um, that I've seen many customers have. They have their developers just making random changes in, in their dev environment versus their QA environment, um, and they really need a solution to make it uh, more standardized. And the common solution for application development, which we should be using for Ansible development, is CICD. Um, Ansible is code, Ansible playbooks and roles are code and should be treated as such. So the CICD pipeline will help stabilize um, any config changes by putting your code through a actual lifecycle environment and testing. I really like the sounds of that. So I've, I do have a follow-up question, which is that we're currently using the robust test framework molecule to test our Ansible roles. Uh, something like you're describing, can that be sort of included? Yeah, so as developers develop their code, they would put their code into a source control manager um, such as Git, GitHub, um, and once they push the code to Git, um, it will go through validation um, by Jenkins or whatever other CI tool you're using, um, watching that Git repo and deciding that it needs to perform code once a push is made. So it will go through a check for valid code step and you can have it check for molecule tests, um, syntax checks, or whatever other tests you would be doing otherwise. Um, once that code is uh, checked for validity, it will be pushed to um, the dev deploy step and then pushed down and actually deployed into your dev environment using either Ansible Tower or Ansible Engine as orchestrated by the CI tool such as Jenkins. Okay, so at that point then, if the code is in the dev environment, can there be a release manager included in this framework to verify that that code is okay and push it forward through the pipeline? Yeah, so generally you're not gonna need somebody to do a release management for the dev environment, but you will want to once it gets into higher environments so that everybody knows what versions are running. Um, that release manager would be um, working with the CI tool of choice, so Jenkins to decide to push what code is running in dev once you've validated that it's working into the higher environment, such as test, QA, UAT, and then eventually prod. Okay, I really like what you've uh, described to me. Um, I think the big takeaway that I really uh, have gathered from this then is that infrastructure really can be treated as code, taking away the inconsistencies that happen when humans type on a keyboard. Yeah, um, we're treating Ansible just like any other application developer would treat their code. They should be pushing on a scheduled release management path and validating that it's working. No more of the random developer putting an update to the code in one environment that wasn't pushed to the others. So I would really like to take this back to my organization. Uh, how could I sort of implement something like you've described? Yeah, so if you would like to incorporate something like we've described, you can reach out to your existing account executive or go to redhat.com slash services.